Oh wow. Well, that might be the one you missed, Matt. what we came for folks that's a Chattooga River Bartram's bass it's an upland species of black bass these are actually more closely related to shoal bass than they are to red-eye bass um, a lot of people still call these fish red-eye bass and they are they are an upland species of black bass but uh, this is a Bartram's bass, and they're native only to the Savannah River system above the fall line. So we're going to get this guy back in the water here. Hello, and welcome to the channel. This is uh, the Chattooga River. The Chattooga River is actually part of the Savannah River drainage, and it flows along the Georgia-South Carolina border and uh, today we are fishing, like I said, today we are fishing for the native Bartram's bass. The Bartram's bass is an undescribed species of black bass. Uh, they are an upland species of black bass. They're one of seven upland species of black bass. You've got the warrior bass, the Cahaba bass, the Tallapoosa bass, the red eye bass, the Chattahoochee bass, the Altamaha bass, and the Bartram's bass. Those are the seven upland species of black bass. And at one time, they were all classified as red-eye bass, but in 2013, four new species were described. So there are seven upland species of black bass, and if you catch all of those, that is considered a slam. And some, some folks call it a red-eye slam, uh, I prefer to call them upland species of black bass just because there is only one red-eye bass and that's the fish that's native to the upper Coosa River drainage. Anyway, I'm actually fishing with the guy that wrote the book on red-eye bass or a book on red-eye bass called Fly Fishing for Red-Eye Bass. It's probably the most comprehensive book on fishing for red-eye bass and uh, even if you're not a fly angler, um, you can learn a lot about upland species of black bass just by reading that book. Again, it's called Fly Fishing for Red-Eye Bass, and that guy down there is the author. His name is Matt Lewis, and he works in the genetics lab at Auburn University. He will go anywhere and do anything to catch these fish. Um, so he is a legit expert and angler when it comes to, to red-eye bass and, and upland species of black bass. We're, we're right now, we're fishing the Chattooga River and he's wading downstream. I don't know how far he's gonna go, but I'm, I probably need to shut up and get down there <laughs> before he catches them all.
It's a small one. Bartram's bass. Well, that trail's Mickey Mouse compared to that. Mm. This is a good one. Ah, he's not that good. He was just in that fast. Yeah. I hate pulling him against this fast water. Another Bartram's on the top water. That one's probably nine, nine and a half, maybe. Oh, wow. He's foul hooked. It's a good one, but he's foul hooked. Nine or ten inches. He didn't fight, so he's got all the fight now. Chunky, chunky Bartrams, native Bartrams bass. There he goes. That was a pretty amazing strike. I hope the camera was able to get some of that. That fish was holding under all this wood. This wood was deposited there during the last high water event during the last flood. Then as the rivers, the water level came back down, the last big rain, you know, the water levels come up. That's how high the water was. And uh, there's obviously a current refuge here because all that wood uh, gets deposited right there. There must be a huge back eddy here when there's a flood. And uh, that makes this a really, really good hole. There's one. I bet you didn't even see that one strike. I, I almost didn't. My bait just disappeared. It's not a big fish. Um, he just kind of sucked my top water under water. It's a juvenile there.
Ooh, Matt, you just had one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I said something. <laughs> Okay. All right, buddy. Little Bartrams. That's what we came for, the target species. And his markings pretty much became more diffuse and disappeared on me while I was trying to remove the treble hook. We'll get this guy back in the water. There he goes. a red breast red breast sunfish we check out the colors on this dude pretty pretty amazing color on that one and that's a male you can tell those are the uh, breeding or spawning colors you got the vermiculations under the eye it's got the long opercular flap or, you know, most anglers call that an ear. It's just an, an extension of the gill cover. There's one. Not sure what, what it is. Could be another red breast or a, the target species. It's a, 
It's a Bartram's. Got the front treble in the mouth. That's probably the best one I've got today. That, that fish is pushing 10 inches. Really just a beautiful fish. Got the turquoise crescent there on the back of the eye. You can't really see it, but uh, got the faint white margins on the caudal fin there. And there's not much light. It's kind of overcast right now. But uh, get this guy back in the water. It is almost July, so you don't want to get these fish out of the water. And there he goes. I generally try to hold the fish until I can feel it, you know, struggle or swim under its own power. And then I just kind of release my grip on the thumb. And if it's strong enough to, to pull its way, you know, pull away, then that's really all I do generally. I, there's no revival necessary. I'm not, I don't have an Instagram account. These fish aren't out of the water very long at all. That was probably the best one I've caught all day. That was, again, I, I didn't measure that fish, but it was probably 10 inches right right on the nose, I'd guess. Not not really a trophy, Bartram's, so, you know, they, they do get to be, Bartram's max out around 12 to 14 inches. Uh, the guys at Clemson, they've never sampled one over 14 inches, a pure one. Uh, if you get one over 14, chances are it's, it's a hybrid if it, you know, it's a back cross. Well, folks, that's it. I'll, I hope you enjoyed that. Woo-hoo! <laughs>